What's up guys, we are back with another G.I. Joe Classified Series review, taking a look at what is arguably, well, maybe not even arguably, just definitely the most anticipated release, at least for the rest of the year, right? We're taking a look at the G.I. Joe Serpentor with Chariot, the big deluxe convention set. And I'm really excited for this, just to see what's going on with that Chariot, and of course, Serpentor is a wild design. Now this guy being a deluxe convention style release does get a sort of fancy box too. He's got this sort of like, Cobra style case box motif going on and then you've got this weird sort of bookend slipcover that has Serpentor there on the front. You've got his number 57 on the side and then the back of the box and the slipcover sort of bisects this awesome print spread showcasing Serpentor sort of duking it out with Cobra Commander and all sorts of other crazy stuff going on. But like I said, you know, that is a slipcover and it's it's kind of a weird one, you know. It's it's like a like a bookend almost and you've got your actual package here that has this sort of front flap on the Cobra case that will reveal Serpentor inside. So you've got like all of his accoutrement on him, all of his doodads and bits and bobs. You've got the actual figure there inside and you've got more of that print artwork. And I'm assuming the chariot is in there, right? Because uh, that's the picture. But I like this packaging. It very much reminds me of the Black Series Thrawn exclusive packaging. Uh, where you open it up and it's sort of got all of this stuff there in sort of these little compartments. But I do like it. Uh, it's pretty cool and it looks like you can put most of it back if you if you want to, although I'm assuming the chariot's going to need some assembly. But let's get to it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go. Out of the package, our classified Serpentor figure. This guy is, well, he's, he's something. He's, he's definitely a little bit different than the norm. Obviously, he comes with a chariot and we're going to get to that. But the figure on his own is definitely not your average classified figure. It's it's got that same build and articulation scheme, but he's huge. Like he's 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 definitely going to need some size comparisons just to demonstrate how big he is. He's 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 all around beefier, uh, if that makes any sense, which is kind of surprising, but also pretty cool. So let's see what he can do. See how he moves around. He is very interestingly put together at the head because. How he is right now, the head is completely locked down, cannot move. And that is because the snake cowl that he has, it pegs into the top of his head, but it also pegs into the back. So it, it can't go anywhere. Um, what you can do is you can pop that peg out of the back, and then he does have some range. Of course, you know, it's gonna, gonna do some weird stuff. And there are other parts that we're gonna talk about that will allow him to move more freely. Uh, but in terms of how he comes out of the box, there is this thing to contend with. So you can kind of see, you know, we'll just take it off. So the head does have a lot of range. Like it does look up really good. It looks down really good side to side. You got full rotation. But when you put this thing on, it does, it, it does limit it a little bit. He can look down really good still. You've still got your tilt. You've got most of that rotation. It's mostly looking up that becomes a problem when this particular cow was on. Again, he's constructed in a way that allows for swappable parts. That kind of alleviates some of that problem. So not a huge negative, really. It's just uh, it's just an oddity thing. I will say beyond that, this is probably the most stiffly jointed classified figure I've ever gotten. I have had to heat him up almost entirely uh, to get the elbows moving, to get the knees moving, to get the ankles moving. It, it's been really weird. I'm curious if he's actually going to cooperate now. So we've got arms that are super, super tight for me at the shoulder. They do not want to go anywhere. Uh, it's really, really weird. And I, I'm not, not sure if it's because the uh, soft goods are in the way because they're sort of in that joint, but it feels really tight for me. And it, obviously it could just be mine. So the arms are supposed to go all the way out easily. They do rotate. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got our double jointed pinless elbows. And you know, again, mine are just really, really tight. So he's got pretty good range there. He's got thick arms, so they're not like the most poseable, but they're still way better than 90. Hinges, rotation at the wrist. We've got a diaphragm cut, of course, so he goes all the way around, backwards, forward, really good tilt side to side. And of course, you've got the ball peg way, so he can crunch forward pretty nicely. He goes backwards. You do get a little bit of added tilt and rotation down there, but you know, it's gonna look kind of weird. Most of your rotation's gonna come from this anyway, so it's fine. Drop down hips, love those kick forward pretty much all the way, kick backwards a little bit. We can put that back up there. They go all the way out, of course. You got a really nicely hidden thigh cut. The armor goes over that cut just slightly enough to kind of hide a lot of that. Double jointed knees, pinless again. And again, these were, were really, really tight for me. Your mileage may vary, of course. Pretty decent range there. You've got a boot cut, and then we've got rocker 
and we've got really nice hinges down at those ankles. So, you know, like I said, he is very normal for a classified figure, but at the same time, he's, he's not. He's a little bit different. The head is definitely a very unique thing for Serpentor here. And then, of course, he's, well, he's bigger. Where this guy truly shines for me, though, because we all knew how he was going to move, basically. And the only real surprise here is the head. And it's not even that big of a thing, because there are ways around it with this release. Where this guy really does it for me is, is just the look. I mean, look at him. He's absolutely amazing. I'm really, really happy with this figure. I think the design, the overall execution, and just the colors, the sheen, the finish on this guy are, are tremendous. I love the cape, even though it's not wired. I do think it's, it's definitely able to get a wire shoved up in that seam, so I might have to go down that road. But, I mean, just taking it face value right out of the box, I think he looks pretty, pretty snazzy. The golds are a nice, you know, different style of gold. So you've got a really, really shiny one for the face guard, for the torso, and then you've got a different gold that still has a nice little bit of a luster to it. And then that sort of, you know, viper green almost here on him that does look really nice. And they kind of clash, but they also go together. Of course, everything is absolutely covered in tons of detail. Everything is scaly or just very reptilian in many ways. You know, even like things like the feet and the shin guards and the knee pads, while they aren't necessarily covered in scales, they definitely have some sort of a reptilian theme going. You've got a snake belt, and that is a happy, happy snake belt buckle right there. He is, he is excited to be there. We've got the, the sort of snake armor that wraps around the torso and the twin vipers that come out of the chest. I, I think it's just a really cool design and it, it works really well, you know, in the confines of the fact that, you know, the, the main bad guy organization in G.I. Joe is, of course, called Cobra. So let's not, you know, go crazy with, with, our, with our villains and just get nuts with, with snake stuff. You know, obviously, obviously that's going to happen. And, and I think he looks pretty wild. Uh, the only thing I don't really like right out of the box is this. This hole in his, in his wrist really bothers me. I feel like there should have been something there to, to cover that, uh, especially because, you know, there is a piece that will go in there that we'll talk about later, but that's kind of unsightly. I'll probably have that accessory always on him just to cover it, but I'd like the option otherwise. There is a lot to talk about with the, with the cape here because it's got an interesting design because it's obviously not just a cape, you know, it sort of sits around him. So it's kind of like a robe slash cape it's not wired again, um, but it definitely has the ability to because they've got that seam just big enough where you could shove a wire up in there. It's scaled, so of course it kind of continues that reptilian theme, that snake theme, so it looks like snake skin almost. I I'm pretty happy with that. I like the color. I do recall the solicitation pictures kind of making this seem like it was a little bit metallic. And, and I don't know if that, if that was just, you know, lighting or something, or maybe I'm just misremembering, but it's definitely not. But I think it matches his armor pretty well, too. So all of those colors are fairly consistent. The green on his body is very close to the green on the cape. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then we've got our head sculpt up here, which I think it's, tr it's tremendous. There's a, there's a nice expression, but also a good kind of stoic nature about him. Like he's not super, super, um, you know, expressive with, with his face, but he's also not just neutral either. So they kind of, they kind of rode that line pretty well. He's got a little bit of a scowl going. There is some tremendous face printing up here. And of course, just like any other, if you get way too close, it's probably not going to look great. But from, from where I'm sitting right now, it's really nice. The lips look good. The eyes look good. There's subtle shading on his cheekbones. And then just this this cowl piece that wraps around him. You know, you've got that super metallic gold for like the face guard and the chin guard with the with the fangs coming up to his lips. And then you've got your kind of cobra cowl over top of it, which is a different shade of gold, but also has some of that same gold piping around the mouth just to kind of tie it all together and make it look a little bit more seamless. It does, of course, you know, like I said, it does impede articulation a little bit, but there is a way around it. And I and I think he looks I think he looks pretty tremendous. So granted, he is a very, you know, ostentatious and very different kind of figure, but he's gonna he's gonna look really, really menacing and very regal and certainly very, you know, like big boss kind of figure when he's standing with all your Joe baddies, with your with your Cobra guys, you know, all that stuff. He's gonna look like he belongs at the top of the ranks. Now, as far as size comparisons go, you know, I've mentioned that Serpentor is really big and yeah, he, he's a really big figure, especially compared to 
well, normal classified series figures. So here is the uh, Supreme Cobra Commander, and you can see that, I mean, Serpentor is beefier, and by all accounts, about a whole head taller than Cobra Commander. And of course, most figures in this line are roughly this size. So, you know, here's here's a different one. Let's pull, let's pull Cobra Commander aside, and here he is with, you know, Pimp Daddy Destro, You've got another figure here that is basically, you know, a head shorter uh, than Serpentor is. So he has a lot of bulk. He has a lot of height. And then, you know, here he is with a Super 7 figure. Of course, the Turtles are, are on the smaller side of that spectrum, but they're beefy and bulky. And you can see how he stacks up with something that's a little bit different. Let's pull him aside. Here he is with a Marvel Legends figure. Here he is with the modular Iron Man. He's, again, about a head taller. So he is a very all-around larger figure compared to most Hasbro stuff. And then let's do one more. And here he is, this is probably a really telling one, with a Mythic Legions figure. So of course, not 112, generally speaking, a little bit bulkier, and he still is putting this guy in his place a little bit. He's taller, and he still looks to be a little bit bulkier all around. So Serpentor is gonna have a lot of shelf presence, no matter whether he's on his chariot or not, when you mix him in with other Joe's figures. Now, as far as accessories goes, Serpentor comes with, well, he comes with a lot. Like, really, he comes with a lot. And I know this is a convention-y style exclusive, so he should come with a lot. But they definitely deliver in the quantity aspect of it. And there's a lot of cool stuff here, too. And, you know, of course, we've not even gotten to the chariot part of this release. We're still focused on just the figure. So he's already bigger, he's got a lot of deco, he's got a cape, and he comes with a lot of stuff. So, to start with, we do get the head pieces that I mentioned. So this is what he comes with in the box. So, you know, you've got the whole thing, one piece, fits on the head, pegs into the back, but he gets two pieces to sort of mimic that while allowing for more range of motion. This frill on the back is a little bit more detailed, but it does give you a more range of motion here. So, you know, his head can go fully up now. Uh, basically, it can move, whereas before it really couldn't. So you've got the skull cap here, and then you've got this back piece, and you can, of course, take this off if you want to do something like this, where he just has the helmet on, maybe like a battle mode almost, where he's ready to throw down. We do get uh, a bunch of other weaponry type of things and little little buddies too. So of course he is Serpentor, so he comes with some snakes. You get this little guy here, which is as basic as it could be. None of these snakes are posable. Uh, they are just what they are. So this guy is just slithering along, I guess. So you got this little guy. And then we got this big guy, which is a full-on Cobra, nice paint details, really, really great sculpt. I like the pose here, and then it's sort of reared back. So this big guy can just be on the chariot with him or, you know, I don't know, use him to attack some Joes, but you've got some snake buddies there. We get the uh, little add-on here that I mentioned previously that fills the hole in his wrist. So you get this sort of wrist gauntlet claw apparatus, and you, you get two of them. So this is the sort of standard version, and I do wish that while it is a cool idea and I like the accessory and I like the weapon aspect of it, I wish it was not just gray. I wish it had a little bit more detail to it because compared to the rest of the deco and color on this figure, it falls pretty flat. We do get a battle version though, which is fully extended claws. And the, these are keyed, so they will just fit in that, that wrist and they are very snug. They're not gonna go anywhere. And then we get some other weapons. So we get his uh, sword. So we've got a silver metallic blade with your gold hilt. Of course, there's a snake on the hilt. Why not? I mean, that's probably a requirement for him, right? And then we get his staff, which is just that gold plastic, but it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, a little bit of a luster. It's slightly metallic, that sort of pearlescent stuff. And then a little bit of a red jewel down there on the bottom. This thing's pretty big too. It's almost as tall as the figure. So of course that means it's big in general because he's bigger than most stuff in the line. He does have a lot of stuff for himself. You know, again, there is still a chariot to discuss but taken at face value, Serpentor does come with a whole bunch of different things, add-ons, different expression type of pieces, and then weaponry. The only thing I really wish this guy had is extra hands, because this, this line is very much like Black Series in that you don't ever get any hands. We don't, we hardly ever, I can't think of a hands pack off the top of my head, you know, right? Other figures that have different hands, I'm sure there are a few, but they are very few and far between. And of all the figures that could need them, it would be Serpentor because he comes with no guns, but he comes with trigger fingers on both hands. So I really don't like that. And of course, these are definitely gonna be unique to him because he's larger and they are, I mean, they're snakes. There are snakes on those. So it's not like they're gonna throw them on just any random figure. I do wish he had some other hands or at least 
not trigger finger hands when he's holding a sword or a staff because that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Maybe one fist, something like that. I would have loved to have seen that. Otherwise, you know, outside of harping on the hand aspect of it, I do think that what he has here is a pretty solid spread of accessories that sort of just runs the gamut. And then, of course, here is the other big thing in this box, our chariot. And this thing is is big. Um, we'll show you uh, how it looks with Serpentor here in a second. But, you know, let's take a look at the chariot itself. There is a lot going on here. You do have to put this thing together, although it's it's not that difficult. Everything goes in only one spot. You just pop it all together. And I think, frankly, I think it looks pretty great. It is really big. You know, I know this set is a little on the expensive side, but after all these accessories... And this, I'm, I'm kind of thinking it's worth it. Like, there's definitely a lot of stuff here. I'm really digging uh, the big snake, ornamental snake on the front that does have an opening jaw with a super, super tiny little machine gun up in there too, which is really great. We do have other weapons on it. So you've got these big uh, cannons with the, you know, like the straps that are running back there. These are a little poseable. You can shimmy them around just a little bit. And then you've got your landing gear down here on the bottom. These are probably the only thing that I would consider a problem on these for me. They are really, really tight. Once you, once they're in there, you, I've had to pry them out with something to get them out. But they're, they're fine otherwise. Not really a big deal. I just think it looks great. The gold is similar, but not the same as what's on Serpentor's body. Uh, it is a little bit darker, maybe a little bit less gold. But the actual uh, gold painted accents on the snake itself does really pop and it looks really nice. You've got Cobra logos tampoed on there. Uh, you know, you've got like sort of cautionary loadout things all over it. We do have the control stick with like an altimeter on it and you've got various other controls here. You've got sort of the, the turbine engine that does spin. So it does move within there, which I thought was a pretty cool touch. Entirely unnecessary, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. And then you've got foot pegs for him here also when you want to put Serpentor up there. And of course, this thing is really scaled for him. You can use it with anything else, obviously, but it's definitely a little bit on the bigger side for sure. And then he's going to be up there looking huge and magnanimous up on this thing. I I'm really, really happy with it. I'm glad they decided to do this sort of in one fell swoop where you get them both and you just knock them out. And this thing is is perfect for him. It's definitely going to catch your eye on the shelf. It's certainly the you know the biggest thing we've got in classified so far. And again, it is a pretty expensive set, but I think after you get this in hand and you have the whole thing together, you're going to really appreciate it a lot more because this chariot is just cool. It's definitely a fun piece, and it just it just goes perfectly with him. They are absolutely meant for each other. So yeah, overall, really happy with this release. Serbetor is just a great figure on his own. Again, he's bigger, he's beefier, he's got some crazy deco, he's got a nice cape. It's not wired, but you should be able to wire it up pretty easily on your own based on where that seam is. He comes with a lot of accessories. The only thing I think I'm missing are some hands. And the chariot is just wild. It's, it's a crazy vehicle. It's got a lot of nice little features on it. The design is just tremendous. And of course, it's also pretty big to fit a relatively large figure. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. I know the price point is a little on the high side for some stuff like this, but I do think we're getting quite a bit of bang for our buck. Because honestly, this is this is probably the one of, if not the best Joe release I can think of in quite a while for this line. So that's going to do it for this look at the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Serpentor with Chariot. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.